like Simple's Big Brother. It enables you to load multiple samples, layer them along the keyboard and replay a natural instrument or maybe a synthesizer. It's called multi-sampling. So multi-sampling comes from back in the days, in the 90s, but it's still relevant today. Even though we have the warping engine in Simpler, I think multi-sampling is way more faithful when it comes to Sonic reproduction. So I've got here an Antonelli organ I got in a cardboard cell for about 15 euros. Doesn't sound very good, but you'll find that after I've resampled it, created a sampler instrument with it, we're gonna get a lot more out of it. So let's hear this um, Antonelli sample. So you can hear the fan straight away. Really noisy, not that good. So I've got a microphone here ready to record and it's plugged into my sound card going into Ableton Live. So you can see when I hit a key, I can see the level on my channel. I'm gonna do this in the arrangement view. I find this a lot more convenient to edit the takes afterwards. So I'm not going to capture these uh, keys on the left. That's the burden, like an accordion left hand. It's, they are chords. So I'm gonna not bother with that since I'll be able to make my own chords afterwards within the sampler. Great, so I'm going to capture the sound of this piano at different pitches so I can then reconstruct the sound within the sampler. This is what you'd do if someone would lend you a synthesizer, let's say for a whole week. Instead of going on and recording a whole track using the sampler, I'd recommend you actually spend a whole week sound designing a lot of different interesting texture on that synthesizer, and then you resample them one at a time. That way you can build an arsenal of sounds out of that synthesizer and reuse them later on. So let's capture this in Ableton Live. I'm gonna go into record here. The track is armed. There you go, recording has started. In the low range, I'm, going, I'm, I'm only going to capture the sound, let's say every two natural notes. Given the wavelength of the sound, there's no need to capture it very often. However, on the highest range, I'm gonna capture a little bit more often, let's say every other semitone to get a much more faithful reproduction. Let's do this. I'm gonna try not to generate too much click out of the keys when I hit them, because I, I don't, I, I wanna get rid of that. So I'm gonna be gentle with the keys. And I'm also going to record for quite a long time these notes so I can have natural sustain in the notes if I need to. Let's start. I'm going to start doing it every other tone now. I didn't do that one well, I'm going to do it again. That's it, I've captured the whole of that keyboard. Let's now go over to Ableton Live, trim, clean, and load these samples into a sampler to recreate the instrument. So back here with my recorded Antonelli organ, I'm just going to show you now how to prepare these samples prior to loading them into the sampler. So remember there was a lot of noise on the recording, so I'm gonna take care of that first. You see, I'm gonna trim my voice away from the, the actual recording at first. To do this properly and, and neatly, I'm gonna remove the grid in the background of the arrangement view. So right click in the background and select the off mode. Okay, so that way you can really define the cropping area properly and, and precisely. So I'm just gonna take these vocals, my, my own voice away, so it's clean roughly these uh, samples and the next thing I want to do is take care of the noise on that sample. So I'm going to loop around that area here and you see here that's the noise of the fan on its own and this is a great technique. I'm going to use a third party effect. I don't do this very often but Ableton Live just doesn't offer uh, the potential required. I'm going to use a wave plugin. I love the wave plugins and I'm going to use here the denoiser which I use quite a lot and I'm going to go at the bottom of the waves here and grab the X noise mono. Okay, so this is a great plugin. Here, I'm going to learn 
the noise this is it there's a print of the noise done here and I can now remove that noise from the sample itself using here the reduction so now if you hear that sample the noise on its own you can see I can remove almost all of that noise because there's a print being done of that noise okay and this will be removed out of all the samples on that track. I could also take care of a little bit of the bass. I'm going to go over and then EQ8 and remove the bass from the bottom end like so. Right there, that's it, that's done. So I'm now going to freeze flatten the track to print these two effects onto the sound. So right click on the name of the track and freeze the track. Right click again now and flatten it so that everything is bounced. So this is now cleaned. I'm now going to go in and separate every sample. So I'm just going to come on E and this is the best way to do it. Come on E will let you trim the sample. So I can do that rather quickly, rather roughly. I can then still trim them within the sampler itself. So this will be done precisely in the sampler. I'm just going to go quite rough here for now. Like so. Okay. And the next step after that will be tuning the sample. So this old Antonelli organ was very detuned and you'll find this is the case with a lot of old school synthesizers as well. They get detuned really quickly. So if there isn't a tuning button on the synthesizer, you're gonna need to tune it within Ableton Live. So let's remove the silences now. Don't need them anymore. Right there. So I can quickly do that now. It's just quite quick. Let's take this little one off. Oops let's take that little one off here good so you see it's quite time consuming all this but it's, it will pay off it's really rewarding to make your own sampler instrument there you go okay so now let's go and tune the samples to do this I'm going to use the brand new tuner we have in Ableton Live load it onto the track play the sample and look at the tuning here yeah it's really off so I'm going to go and retune that sample down by a few cents of a tone and I'm going to address its warping mode here. So I could do that with all the samples at once, bring them all to Complex Pro. Good, so let's have a look at the tuning now. Yeah, so it takes a while to hit the right note, but once it's in there, it's almost there. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit, uh, up a little higher. Oh no, down a little bit actually. See, as that lower this, that's it, I'm right in there now, so move on to the next one, do the same thing here, it's a little very sharp, there we go, we're going to bring it down, in sense of a tone, I think the whole thing will be sharp, that's it, I'm in there, so you see, I'm going to do this for every single sample, That's it, you see? So I'm going to do this for every single sample, but I'm going to move over to the next step where I'm going to consolidate these samples. So that's it, I've retuned all the samples. I'm now going to consolidate this so that the new tuning is printed right onto the clips. Now, I want to attract your attention to something. When I consolidate a part of this, look at the volume of the clip. So I'm going to consolidate now and look at the volume of the clip. It's being trimmed down. That's because Ableton Live actually normalizes the sound in the background. So normalizing is a process where as the sample will be brought to its maximum loudness before distortion. So this is not shown on the screen and it's not shown because it's compensated with the clip's volume here. So you'll understand why I'm telling you this in a second. Now I'm gonna go over to my sample folder. So let's go over to the actual current project, reach for the sample tab, processed and here are the consolidated files so if I bring them into a track now look at the loudness of this file look at the loudness here they've all been optimized they've all been normalized can you see this this is great because now they all have the same loudness you see I don't have to worry about the volume differences between the sounds here so this is it my recording has been trimmed it's been cleaned and it's been tuned it's now time to load them into the sampler so I'm going to call up a sampler into a new MIDI track right here that's it here it is I'm going to open the sample tab here alright great so let's visualize everything like so great 
So prior to loading it into the sampler, it's a good practice to locate the sample's pitch. So we can place the root key within the sampler. So if you can't remember what keys you pressed on the keyboard, well, simply use the actual tuner and locate the key and do this for every single key here and rename the keys, rename the samples so you know where to place them on the keys of your sampler. So let's do this for every single key. Here we get C sharp, then we have here E flat. Let's go for D sharp here, E flat, same thing. Let's go over to this one, we get an F here. We'll carry on quickly now. Here we have a G. I'm going to play this one. Another G. Ah, I must have played G twice. Okay, I don't need two samples, so I'm just going to do this one here. I'm going to A here. There we've got a B. Probably not the same octave as the, the other B, so C sharp here. I went up a few octaves, didn't I? So D sharp here. And finally, we have a C here. Okay, great stuff. So, now, back into sampler. Let's load them in. All at once, let's multi-select these samples and load them all here onto the actual zone tab. Great, so now I'm going to determine the pitch, the root key of each of these samples. This was E, remember? So I've soloed it here. Let's just trigger it with a MIDI clip here inside the right track. Let's trigger it on C sharp here. Great. So let's turn that off. That's it. We got the right, the first sample here being triggered. I soloed it here. I know it's an E because it was loaded in the right order here when I load them all at once. So it's E is the first sample here. Okay. So I know it's an E. I'm going to bring it down on the root key here. I'm gonna match this E2. There you go. Next one down. We got the G here. So I'm going to turn this into a G2. Right there. I don't e really need to listen to them actually. I just follow what I wrote down earlier on. With a little bit of luck, it will work. There you go. I'm going to carry on here. We've got a D sharp. This one is a D sharp. Here we go. Now we got an F. So I'm going upwards. So I went upwards on the keyboard when I played these sounds. Yeah. So I'm going to go upwards here as well. G. Okay. Now I'm going to go to A for the next one. Right there. Next one is a B, so it's up there. Right there. Then we get a C sharp, so that's C4. And down with the last two samples, a D sharp 4. A little bit time consuming, but well rewarding. Uh, I'm not sure what C this is. Let's have a little check here. Mm. Mm. Hmm, this is quite low down. <laughs> I've got a very low C towards the end here. So, it is down on C2, isn't it? That's the last sample. Let's check. Yes, that's right, the last sample. So, that's it. I've spread. And you can see here, the root key being spread across all the keys. And now, there goes a magic trick. I'm going to multi-select all these samples using the Shift key on my computer keyboard. You see, they're all selected. I'm going to right-click on the list and distribute the range around the root key. Magic. See, all the samples now have been spread around their root key and there's no more overlapping, which means I can now trigger these samples. Chromatically. Let's go up again. It's, it's working. And in the low area as well. So I've got, I don't know, four or five octaves of Antonelli here. You see? Great. So, you can go into the sampler editor now and trim the beginning the way you want it, trim the end, make sure that every sample is real clean. Now, I had prepared that sampler instrument ahead of this tutorial and I'm going to show you how it sounds like. I'm going to go to sampler, import, oh, I can't find it, let's just write it here, Antonelli, there you go, presets, that's where it's yeah, okay, sampler and Tonelli. So I'm going to drop that one here. Let's listen to that. See, it sounds great. So you see, I got rid of the clicks from the keys. I got rid of the fan noise. It 
it's now a perfect instrument, actually much more usable than the original if you ask me. Now what I also did is prepared a few variations of that instrument, now I've got the dub version here. See how cool this is. I've mapped a few little important effects here to create something way different than the original. I've got here uh, a major chord one, so it's al always in major. Making almost like a, the bourdon, you see? Creating automatic chords for me. I've got the minor one here. Sounds a little weird actually. I've got the hard version here, which has a little bit of distortion. Here I actually took advantage of the oscillator tab. You can hear a much rougher sound here. So multi-sampling is an extremely rewarding technique, slightly long-winded, but well worth it. You see, I've multi-sampled all my life, right from the beginning of my career. And I have now a whole list, a whole arsenal of multi-sampled sounds and instruments I've made that I can reuse at will.